I'm Jim Kircher. We're going to start out with a visit to the Missouri Botanical Garden. It's one of St. Louis's great attractions locally and regionally. The flowers, the trees, the Climatron, the Japanese garden. But this story is not about all of those wonderful living things. It's about the part of the garden that is full of dead plants. Millions and millions and millions of them. And there are people who travel a long way to visit the two buildings where they are stored, preserved, and archived. Brenda Madden went to find out how and why. They arrive wrapped in bundles from far-flung locales that some of us can only hope to visit one day. This is collection 1 to 48 uh, from um, G.A. Parada from Bolivia. By the time they reach St. Louis, each specimen has been pressed and dried between sheets of newspaper. We receive specimens every day from somewhere around the world. Somewhere around 150,000 specimens a year. That's a lot of plants. In fact, most visitors to the Missouri Botanical Garden probably have no idea that it operates the second largest herbarium in the country and one of the top 10 largest in the world. It is one of the most important things that we do and in a very real sense puts the Botanical Garden on the international map in this endeavor to understand and appreciate and learn about the diversity that's out there. It also brings the world to St. Louis through visiting researchers and ongoing collaborations with other herbaria. So now I'm gonna make that information available for botanists throughout the world. Each herbarium focuses on specific areas of study. Here at the garden, it's the Andean region of South America and tropical Africa, including the island nation of Madagascar, a biodiversity hotspot. Last year alone, staff members discovered 130 species completely new to science. The herbarium is really where new species are discovered. You go on these exotic trips out in the field and collect these plants, but you really have to come back here and compare them and put in all that time to say, hey, this is a new species. It's endlessly fascinating because there's just so much we don't know. Right now, there are perhaps 350,000 to 380,000 described species of plants uh, on the earth, and we estimate that there are perhaps 450,000 out there. There are about 6.6 .6 million mounted specimens filed away in these rolling compactor files, including plants collected by Charles Darwin in the 1830s. Here's another specimen from Argentina that was collected in 1917. Collecting specimens is one thing, but making sense of them is another. And at the end of the day, that's the real reason this herbarium exists. This is what taxonomists, botanists have to do is, I mean, their job is to try to take this diverse stuff and organize it. That starts with the intricate process of naming specimens. Some are clearly defined, but others are botanical puzzles. And sometimes, even when you think you figured one out, well... It's attached to it until someone comes along with a different opinion. But if there's one thing everyone agrees on, it's the absolute importance of this, the actual physical specimen. In herbarium speak, it's called a voucher because even the most advanced technology can't replace the real thing. There's so much that you can get from this physical item that you can't get from that digital image. That's why Herbaria takes serious steps to protect their collections. New deliveries are sent directly to the freezer to kill whatever insects might be traveling with them. Throughout the herbarium, you'll also see small pheromone traps, which are used to detect the presence of two types of beetles that feed on dried plants. And if even a small piece of a specimen breaks off, it's tucked inside a fragment envelope that's attached to its file. Every little piece of it is important. Yeah, well, you, we never know. Mm -hmm. You know, people will come and they'll sample a, a leaf in a fragment, fragment packet uh, for DNA and get some useful information out of it in that way. That sense of wonder and discovery is contagious. Herbarium assistant Lauren Peters says she started out wanting to work with animals, but after interning here in college, she fell in love with plants. The history, the discoveries, we just found a specimen from 1652, 
in the collection this year and things like that are lurking all over this place just waiting to be discovered. Collections are made for one purpose, but they can be used to answer a multitude of different kinds of questions. Many of them we haven't probably even thought of yet.